So Tractor Mike attachments. You can spend a fortune. <laughs> you can fill your garage. Uh, I've been looking at, oh man, I, I could use one of these and I could use one of these. And you could spend thousands and thousands real fast. I have purchased a few attachments that I have, that I didn't have that I think are awesome to have on hand. What do you suggest someone, they got the tractor picked, what are the first attachments they should start looking for? Well, don't, don't ever buy a tractor without a front end load. And, and, and most tractors come from the factory. They unload off the truck with a loader on. So that, that for sure. Even if you're never gonna use it, your resale value on a loader equipped tractor uh, more than justifies the cost and you will use it, I promise you. <laughs> you know, mo most tractors come, uh, come out, uh, uh, are delivered from the dealer with a rough cut bush hog or brush hog or rotary cutter uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's uh, in, in Great Britain, they call them toppers. In Australia, they call them slashers. Uh, but a, a rough cut rotary cutter of some, of some sort. And I, I think that number is like, it's like 80 or 90% of the tractors that are sold. The new smaller tractors wow. have a, a rotary cutter. So, so that's your main thing right there. Uh, probably the next one, uh, most people moving out to the country have a long driveway and uh, after a year or two, they either have a, a, a washed out area or a crown in the middle and a, a, a very packed place uh, on the sides. And a, a box blade is what you get for that. Um, some people think they can get a straight blade, just a, you know, an angle blade. And, and they, they don't they do well on a driveway. I mean, if you go over it enough times, you can kind of work it up. But, uh, a straight blade is what I call angle blade. Uh, here in Missouri, that's what we use for snow removal. Um, and, and so here, uh, what I'll have is, is a, the, the rotary cutter, the loader, um, the, the, the box blade, the straight blade for snow removal, and then a post hole digger, uh, post auger, whatever you want to call that. I, I use that fairly often. And then after that, uh, you know, some people like a backhoe. I've never... I was probably the worst backhoe salesman in the world when, when I was selling tractors because I, uh, I've, got a, I've got a buddy that backhoe Doug, I call him. Uh, if we've got a horse dies or building foundation, to, I'll, I'll call Doug. And he charges heavily, but less than it would cost me to own a backhoe. And, and if you're in a really rocky area, a small backhoe on the back of a compact tractor can struggle a little bit to dig much. But now a lot of people buy backhoes and use them a lot. So I, I don't want to poo-poo that idea. <laughs> Gosh, I'm trying to, I, I'll tell you, this is, this is not what you normally think about as a, an attachment or an implement, but uh, I use pallet forks yes. probably, probably more than anything else. Mike, that was my sleeper attachment. We didn't have it. First thing I bought, Low cost, considering yeah. attachments, I think the yeah. pair we got was under 500 bucks. What oh, else wow. can you buy for a tractor that's under 500 bucks? And man, Mike, I use that thing all the time. <laughs> yep. yep. We use the forks when we moved. We used the forks. We yep. put our, our boxes on pallets, moved them yep. into the big house. Uh, right now I'm working on a project, which people will see on the channel uh, probably next week or the week after. I'm trying to get water up to the field. And I'm using IBC totes, filling the water in the IBC tote and taking the forks and bringing it up. I, I would try to talk everybody I ever sold a tractor uh, into getting pallet forks. And, and uh, they, they were, I never had anybody complain about that. They, that, that was always uh, something that they, they really liked. If you want to ask Tractor Mike a question, watch his videos, or check out his book, All About Buying Tractors, click here to visit his website. More of this interview will be released here on YouTube and part of it will be in a future podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast link below. If you'd like to hear the entire interview right now, that's available in the Pioneer Library. We recorded this live with the Homesteady Pioneers and you can see that interview and join us live for the next interview by clicking here and becoming a Homesteady Pioneer.